different than any other form of energy, as far as I'm concerned, because it actually acts like it's alive. Watching a 15-ton steam tractor as it lumbers past, hearing the engine puff and feeling the ground shake, it really does seem to have a life of its own. This weekend, the entire Arcadia Fairgrounds are alive as farmers, collectors, and spectators flock to Upper Co, Maryland for the 64th annual Maryland Steam Historical Society show. Through the mass of smoke and people, hundreds of antique tractors stand on display, ancestors to today's cutting edge farm equipment. And it all started with steam. After the Civil War, industrialization revolutionized farming in America. By 1870, steam engines around the country were sawing logs, plowing fields, and threshing grain. The laborious job of separating the seed from the plant could now be done faster with a threshing machine and steam engine, but it still wasn't easy. People worked really hard. You know, the engineer for one of these things, for instance, he'd be the first guy up. He'd have to be up an hour and a half, two hours early before the threshing crew. And they'd work 12-hour days. And he'd have to be there an hour or two afterwards doing his maintenance and his prep for the next day. So, you know, people talk about a 16-hour-a-day job. That was that man's life, and they worked six days a week. Most farmers couldn't afford this equipment on their own. So communities or businessmen formed threshing teams who traveled from farm to farm with the tractor and thresher. This continued until the 1930s when smaller gasoline tractors ended the age of steam. In 1954, a group of Maryland farmers realized the machines they grew up with were quickly disappearing. So they created the Maryland Steam Historical Society. Our mission is to preserve history with the equipment and all the techniques that you see here. That, that's truly our mission, and pass it down from generation to generation. And they do that through this show. Here, tractors aren't just on display, they're put to work. Threshing wheat the old-fashioned way takes considerably more time and manpower than a modern combine, but it draws a big crowd. Shocks of wheat are thrown into the old thresher, which separates and cleans the grain. The leftover stalks can be made into straw bales. Meanwhile, another tractor chugs up a storm at the sawmill. All this made possible by the dedicated collectors who keep these antiques in working order. Most of them are designed for a lifespan of around seven to 10 years. So the fact that they still exist and still good enough condition to run is kind of a miracle almost. <laughs> It's like having a pet, basically, because you have to feed it, you have to clean it, you have to water it. it it's a lot more in-depth than just you know, turning a key on a car. It starts with fire, fueled by wood or coal. The fire is in a steel box. It's just a square box in the back here, and that whole box is surrounded by water. So you put water on top of your stove at home to boil water to make spaghetti. You put water on top of your firebox and your steam tractor to boil water to make steam for the tractor. As the water turns to steam, pressure builds. Once it's hot enough, the expanding steam goes into a cylinder, which pushes on a piston, which turns the flywheel. That motion can either turn a belt or move the tractor, slowly. About three mile an hour. <laughs> Not very fast. But driving a steam tractor isn't about speed. For me, I just love the sound, the smell. You know, you're up in the air, you feel like you're on top of the world, you know, you're the king, king <laughs> of the world when you're here. It's a feeling worth sharing, which is why the club also teaches young enthusiasts how to safely maintain and operate these giant machines. These guys put a lot of time, a lot of effort in restoring or bringing these things back to life, and they're proud of it. And, and they'll explain to the people in the show what they've done and how it works. It's exciting to them. The show even has special events just for kids. 
Third grader Clara Collins participated in the pedal pole, a miniature strength contest with a toy tractor. I did kind of good. My knees got stuck on the wheel, so it was kind of hard to pedal. Of course, they have a life-size version for real tractors, too. And if all this excitement makes you hungry, there's plenty to eat. I basically like the hamburgers, the fries. This year they have fried Oreos, and I love fried Oreos, and the hot dogs. Don't forget the steamed potatoes and sweet corn, or perhaps a coal-fired ham with a nice char on it. Hello, bird. <laughs> oh, no. Or maybe just a scoop of steam-powered ice cream. But the biggest attraction starts after the sun sets. The crowd gathers in the darkness as the engines chug into position for one last display. While running at full speed, the engineers dump piles of wood shavings into the firebox, sending showers of red-hot sparks into the night air. It's a grand finale to a show that attracts people from Maryland and beyond all started by a few farmers who wanted to preserve our agricultural past and keep that fire lit for future generations. One of the biggest things you can do to make sure you're heading in the right direction is look back. And it's part of the American personality, you know, to always try and make something better, always try and do something more with what you have. And I think it's important that we, we share examples of that so that the youngsters hopefully can learn something from that and keep that spirit alive.